and welcome to this tutorial where we'll dive into the exciting world of game development using Gloo 4. Today we are going to learn how to add dynamic shadows to any 2D sprite, enhancing the visual depth and realism of your game. Ever wondered how to make your game characters feel more alive with just a shadow? Let's unravel the magic of dynamic shadows in Godot 4. In this demo, we'll set up a side-by-side -side comparison. On the left, we have three characters without shadows, and on the right, the same characters with dynamic shadows enabled. Let's start by focusing on the left side. Notice the characters here. They look decent, but something feels flat, right? That's because they lack the depth and the grounding that shadows provide. Now shift your attention to the right. See the difference? These characters have dynamic shadows. Notice how the shadows add a layer of depth, making the characters appear more integrated with their environment. Shadows are not just visual elements. They are storytelling tools. They add a realism, creating a more immersive experience. They also play a critical role in visual aesthetics making scenes more dynamic and engaging. Typically, shadows in sprite-based games are static, created during the design phase. But what if you want more control, more flexibility? That's where dynamic shadows come in. We'll create shadows that can be adjusted in terms of color, position, and distortion right within Godot. So why go dynamic? Flexibility is key. Whether it's changing environment, different lighting conditions, or unique sprite actions, dynamic shadows adapt seamlessly, adding a layer of depth and realism to your game. I have a project set up. Uh, let's focus only on the Yeti uh, player. So I will explain to you what is my thought process. So creating a shadow basically means we duplicate the sprite, then we flip it vertically and align it to the top, the bottom of the original sprite. For shadow, usually is distorted. We can achieve this, the result by going to transform and change the value for skew. I give it 45. Then I'm going to realign it. Since shadow usually uh, display as a dark color, I will just go to uh, visibility and modulate and change this to a dark color and I'm probably gonna, go, gonna be a black color and uh, lower the alpha. As you can see, we successfully created a shadow manually. So in the actual game, we are going to replace this manual process with code. Next, let me show you how to write the logic in code. Let's look at the setup for uh, Yeti. Uh, its parent node is uh, Sprite2D then it has uh, an animation player as the child, which control the animation. Currently, we have only one animation, which is idling. Let's look at the code. The idea is very simple. We need to uh, get a reference to the animation player so that we can calculate the currently active frame. Based on that frame index, we are able to get the sprite once we found that sprite, we are able to create a shadow and add it to the scene tree. Shadow array is used to store all the shadows in order to reduce memory footprints and fast shadow rendering. We create all the shadows in ready method, so we will never recreate any shadows uh, when we need to use them. This is a very good uh, uh, practice. So let's see the logic inside the ready function. First, we create an image texture based on the 
image we use for a Yeti. Then based on each frame's width, we calculate all the frames. Then in the for loop, for every frame, we are going to create a shadow. So for the shadow, we use a regional rect to define which region we want to create a shadow. Once a shadow is created, we flip it, then we assign it a position. So this process is identical to what we did when we uh, create the shadow manually in the previous step. And then we assign uh, the modulate to the shadow to change its color and transparency value. Then we added a skew. Once all these steps are done, we add them to shadow. Now they are ready for rendering. Process functions responsible for synchronizing the shadow's appearance with the current frame of the animation played by the animation player. When animation is playing, we find the animation first, then we find its track ID. If the track ID exists, then we find the current animation time and how many keys for this track. Then we loop through all the keys that find if this key is the last key or if the next key is before the current time. When this happened, it means the current frame of the animation corresponds to this key. Then we will assign that value to animation frame. That's how we find the current index for the shadow. Once this is done, we remove all previously added shadow, then add the latest shadow. That's how we dynamically add shadow to the game. This approach can be extended or modified for various effects, such as creating after images, ghost trails, or other visual effects tied to character movement in 2D games. And there you have it, a simple yet powerful way to add dynamic shadows to your 2D sprites in Godot 4. Experiment with different settings to see what works best for your game. Thanks for watching and happy game developing. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more Godot tutorials. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below or on our Discord server. You can also find the source code in the description. See you in the next video.